What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Climb Together podcast. I am your host, Toner Scorpio, with my co-host, Deception the Rapper. Deception, say hi. What's good? We're yeah, back. We're back. It's been a while. I took the summer off. It's been crazy, busy. You know, the, you know the whole nine. Uh, but I am at college now, and I'm not working like crazy and driving all the time. So I have the energy to stream again. So we're coming back with a podcast in... Um, the climb together fashion on a Wednesday. New time though, because I have class um when it usually it occurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, just changing <laughs> it up a little bit. Um So uh today we got a bunch of different things to get. one, we gotta catch up. Uh like We have a lot of catching up to do. Um just some I like mean... you know, housekeeping things. There's a mountain of things that we have to catch up on. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, and then we have some stuff that's going on right now, some things that are coming up that we want to talk about, and we're going to try to keep it, you know, just keep it rolling. Sound good? Yeah. I All mean, right. I ex- I expect this to be a little bit longer than the normal podcast just because there's so much stuff. Yeah. But uh, We'll see how but it goes. I'm ready. Alrighty, deception. What should we start out with? Um, I think uh to start out with catching up on things. Uh, there. I think for COD we should start out with you know COD champs because yeah. that was a huge thing. That uh, was a big thing. So um. Personally, I did not get to watch it, but it was um, pretty hype from what I hear. Um, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but LA Thieves won? Yeah, LA Thieves yeah. ended up taking champs. Um, it was a super, it was it was really fun to watch. I mean, um, there was there was a lot of action that whole event. It was, it was like every match was like really good. Um and it was nice to see LA Thieves bring it home, uh, you know, especially for for Nade Shot winning his first COD champs, and then you know the thing about LA Thieves that was crazy is not only like the Octane storyline of how he had been waiting so long and he had spent two years on the surge, and it's like he got his like that was the whole redemption arc yeah. coming full circle was the crazier thing is everybody on LA Thieves that was their first ring none of them had won championship so they all got their first championship win oh let's go that champ. that's what's up uh, congrats to all them um that is a uh, that's what's that's what's up that's, a, that's yeah. a nice little thing and then you know uh i was Rewatching one of the uh, older, ep- re-listening to one of our older episodes this morning because I've been trying to like catch up on like thumbnails, upload, you know, getting us yeah. back on track so we can really focus on um some other things. But I was listening and we were we were really you know talking mad mad crap about LA thieves. <laughs> and, and I think everybody the beginning was. of the season because we were talking <laughs> about how like last year they were um making roster changes like every week and and. They, and just to see their growth from last, like last year to this year, the fact that they won a championship, and it kind of just like is a testament that like the league is getting more competitive. It's not just Phase winning everything anymore. Like even Phase yeah. made roster changes this year, like substantial ones. Like, do you want to like go through that real quick? You want to go through like the um the new rosters after we talk a yeah. bit more about champs. There, I mean, there are so many roster changes. Like, I mean, it's like, I'm pretty sure that um, the only teams that, the only team that I've heard that has stuck is Optic so far. And (laughs) everybody else is like, I mean. You know, know Optic is Optic, so, you know, they do do their thing. And the crazy thing is, Optic almost didn't stick. Yeah. There was a day where there was a 24 hour period where Dashie and Ellie were free agents. Like, oh. 
Yeah. Uh, so after champs, you know, where Thieves got, you know, Thieves won, FaZe finished second for the millionth time this season. Um, and, you know, Surge ended up placing top three, which is really good for them compared to their other champs' performances. I was really kind of hoping for Surge versus Thieves in the Grand Finals, but, you know. Um, after all of that, um, it's the whole, like, there was a flood of roster changes after champs. I mean, yeah. all of Rocker got released. Most um, of the teams got, like, released. Just, like, a lot yeah, of teams but just it said, basically, we're cleaning, we're cleaning yeah, house. Yeah, it was basically a, a squad wipe for every team. <laughs> like, I mean... Good gaming term on that one, Deception. That was good, that was good. I mean, because if we want to look at... Like, I'm going back and looking at, like, all of the roster changes from the well, second that they well, started. Well, do you want to, like, start with, like... I'm, I'm on CDL Intel Twitter right now. I'm gonna, I think we should just go through and kind of, like, you know, say what's up as far as, like teams go we can start back as far, as far okay as so if we want to if we want to look at like who like the timeline of who got released versus who's coming back and when they started announcing teams yeah so one of the first moves that happened was boston released tj yeah. and then pro loot got released but he was a sub for optics so it's not like it really mattered a whole lot uh general also got released as a sub from optic uh, but all of Rocker went to unrestricted free agency. They they all got, they all technically got released. Yeah. Uh, Bance got released. Capsidal got released from Boston. Arsenis um, got released from Phase. Yeah, Arsenis got released. Um, Asim and Gunless got released from LAG. Like. Literally, like, there were so many roster changes. Uh, Skies got released from Florida. I think, actually, Florida was another squad wipe. Uh, actually, they, they squad wiped their whole starting roster and their sub. Um, and then Cami got released from Ultra. Like, And then the whole, the craziest thing is, like, a couple of days later, Dashi and Illy got released. Mm -hmm. They were unrestricted free agents. And... That was wild, because there were so many rumors that were happening around that time. In that 24-hour period, it went from Optic is fine, they're sticking, to Dashi and Illy are free agents, what is happening? And there were rumors that Hydra was coming over to Optic, there were rumors that they were trying to get Cami. there were rumors that they possibly were looking at Arcides. Mm -hmm. There was actually a rumor for a little bit that Shotzi was going to go to FaZe and they were going to trade him for somebody. Um... They were, I mean, it was everything like all these rumors were swirling around, and then all of a sudden, a day later, Optic Texas tweets that they're running it back with the same roster, yeah. and it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're keeping this. I mean, like, why? Like, they literally, it's like August 18th, back for their 2022 MW2, um, uh, Dashi, Shotzi, Illy, and then like, yeah, you know, has them on the stage and everything, so. Well, I mean, this is what happened. A lot of people thought that they were just trolling, and they actually weren't trolling. They were actually thinking about making yeah. a change. But then, but honestly, like, would have the cha like would the change have been that good? That's the thing, though. Is like they do have a solid squad. It's just it's, there's things here and there. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, I just think that that team was so good, and this is exactly what Scump was telling him when they were looking at when they actually released Dashi and them is they that was actually going to happen that was not like it was not oh let's troll people for roster mania that was actually a thing that was about to happen and skump like kind of convinced him he was like you know Illy had been injured basically all season and they didn't really give themselves a proper shot because of all the issues that Illy had and all the stuff they had to go through and how hard of a year it was. So he was like, like, come on, like, why are we not going to run it back? And yeah. they were like, okay. Like, you know, and they really did get the short end of the stick with that, with the whole Illy situation, you know, with him being injured for like, in the most crucial point of the season. I mean, that thumb injury, I'm pretty sure it started coming up 
at the end of stage two. And yeah. I mean, that's like half the season. I mean, and he had probably, regardless of when the injury actually started presenting itself, he could have been experiencing pain and stuff the whole time and just never said anything about it. Like, I mean, he could have been injured for a minute. I mean, it, it's crazy. I like when I see the, when I see how the injury affected him and how it affected the entire team, I was sitting here wondering why they weren't going to try to run it back because I didn't feel like that they had their shot. Like, they did so well at Major 1. It's like it went downhill from there. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's, it'll be interesting. I mean, hopefully they can... They've been getting better year by year. I think they're kind of getting their stride. Um, maybe, You know, hopefully since they're staying with this roster, make, um, yeah. it'll make things good. But moving on to like the next team, uh, I'm just kind of like scrolling through the here. Um, so the official LJ LAG Gorillas. No, I'm not LAG. Oh yeah, uh, LAG. LA, they LA Gorillas. They they got a good team. I yeah, think. Yeah. So they got Spark, sure. Neptune, RSDs, and um. So that's gonna be interesting. RSDs. He's a you know he's a multiple champion, you know, multiple uh, COD champ. Uh, Spark. He has two rings. Yeah. I said multiple. Spart one. And um, Spart won major. He won what? Major two for LEG, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And then you got Hook so, on there too. Um, Hook's seen some. I mean, Hook is that who has there. a ring? Hook does He's have a ring. He's been competing forever. Yeah. <laughs> Neptune, um, he, uh. I really don't know about Neptune, but. I think Neptune's definitely good. I, I think Neptune hasn't had his like fair shake in the league. I mean But this is gonna he, be a good team, I think, going a high contender. I think they have what it takes. Yeah. Like oh, yeah, I, sure. I think I think this if if this like if we get a couple more like really solid teams, I think we might see another Vanguard year where it's like basically anybody can win a major except for the Legion. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh uh so um. So Lenafe's also dropped Pristini off of their uh, list, so that made him a free agent. Yeah, uh, they made him a free agent, and actually, to make another roster complete, they picked up Slasher from LAG. Oh yeah, they did. Um, so, so that's uh the phase the phase roster is gonna be uh pretty interesting. They only they only made the one change, you know, dropping RSDs for Slasher. But Slasher's like he's a he's actually like an absolute goat in the Call of Duty community, so his pickup will be um good for them as long as they mesh well as a team, which I'm I'm guessing they're going to, honestly. Like, I mean, I hope they do. I mean, to me, like I- at least in my opinion, this team is either gonna be really good, still contending for championships every event, mm-hmm. or they're gonna implode like halfway through the season. Because yeah. that's how Slasher's teams have gone. Anytime Slasher's on a team, it's like they either the team is either really good and they're and they are like contending all the time or they are completely in shambles halfway through the season and they have to make a change. Um but I do I have confidence that he'll mesh with these phase guys because he knows that he has a good team on his hands, so he's mm-hmm. probably gonna try to do everything he can to fit in here and make sure that he's like trying to win championships yeah. all the time. Because, I mean, he's got the best shot with this team that he's had in years. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, la- like, the last time... I mean, this is like Atlanta phase. Like, this, this yeah, the, la- is... the last time he had a team this good was probably um, LA Thieves and BO4. Yeah. Which LA Thieves and BO4 was a... They, they kicked butt. Um, yeah, they were a really good team. So, the next team that I got is uh, Rocker. Um, their, uh, their lineup is Astros... Uh, Cami, Attach, and Bance. So they keep they keep Attach from last um from last year, which yep. I think is Attach is the only one that stayed. Yeah. So um, but I, that was also another rumor. Fun fact is that Attach was going to Optic. That was another rumor that, with the yeah, that, was, that was the rumor. There was a lot of rumors, but well, I know that 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 Rocker would have to be willing to you know sell Attach out because they I think he was Attach, the only one they kept. I think. 
I think Rocker looking to attach as their franchise player. I think they're going to yeah. keep him around no matter what happens. Yeah, I kind of like the way that uh, Optic is with Scump. Like it's like yeah, and the way that him. Uh, yeah. the way that the we'll get to this later, but the now Vegas Legion now the way they are with Temp is they're just going to try to keep him around. I don't like Temp, and I will say that over and over again. I don't like him at all. <laughs> I it don't like, like him, but I really like wish a... he would get off this team. Oh, bro. Anyway, um, so yeah, so that's like a pretty good setup team. I mean, um, Bance and Cami, they were on uh, Toronto Ultra. Yeah, them bringing those so... two together over, that's going to be really nice. Yeah. Because Cause they work really well together. Yeah, Bance and Cami are really good together. So that's, that's what's up. And then... Um... Oh, I'm just trying to find the next one. Sorry. This hasn't been fully announced. The roster hasn't been fully announced, but there have been rumors. But Methods did get re-signed to Boston Breach, so he's probably going to be another one of their franchise players. Okay. okay. Um, but there's a rumor right now that the Boston Breach roster is going to be Methods, Vivid, Awakening, and somebody else. I don't oh, remember okay. who the fourth guy is, but the, Boston's been dropping a ton of rumors that awakening is coming um so we there's like basically confirmation that awakening is coming there's rumors that vivid's coming Mm -hmm. um another thing is another team that's running it back is seattle surge they're keeping the same roster accuracy macmelts pred sib which is you know I mean, they did really good last year, too. I mean, and then now this year, you know, they're what they had like two uh, rookies. So now those two rookies aren't rookies anymore. So they yeah, have they won. That, they won an event yeah. this year. So, so they, they, have, they were doing great. They have that experience underneath their belt. And now they're like, all right, time, time, let's go, you know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really excited for that team because I know how good they are. And I'm really glad that Seattle has turned their organization around and yeah. brought, they really, they really brought it last year. And I think they're, I think they're going to be just as good this year. Yeah. Um. So, and then the next one is Toronto Ultra. Um. They have Scrappy, Standy, Insight, and T Clean. I think that's um, a good team. Kleenex. Yeah, Kleenex. Sorry, my bad. I think that's a good team. Yeah. I I really I really like Scrappy. He's like Scrappy is like a classic Call of Duty player. Like he's got the personality for this league, and he's really good. <laughs> Yeah, I hope um, so if they're really good. Like, like <laughs> there's videos of him at the Pro Am Classic just yelling at people. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, like he he is the, he is like he's like Clay. He's got that fire in him. Like, I think I think that's gonna be a fun team to watch. Yo, shout out to you know Snowman Burner for telling me I'm still under GTA instead of just chatting. Appreciate you, homie. I love you. So hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ricky mistake. My bad. It's been a while. Um. But yeah, I mean, like, uh, Toronto Ultra is going to be a... I think they're going to be a good, good squad going forward. Oh, they're going to have a oh, good yeah. team. And then Standy, he's, like, pretty freaking... He's, he's an animal on the... On the yeah, the fact the that map. they got Standy is huge. Like, I mean, Standy is really good. animal. Um, Sandy so then, is crazy. Good then we got this game. we got Vegas Legion, uh, changing their name from Paris Legion to Vegas Legion. Um, yeah, they changed their name by the way, but they did not change their logo at all. They just <laughs> they just said copy paste, <laughs> change the name. <laughs> you know. Um. Uh, but you know, uh, we actually we talked we talked about this on the on the podcast a, a few months ago that this was gonna happen. Finally did. Um, what was it? Two days ago. You know what's crazy? That actually. When they posted that thing about, um, then when they posted that thing about Vegas Legion, that was just them trolling at first. That wasn't yeah. actually confirmed, but they actually confirmed it like recently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what's gonna happen with that team. The only thing that we know right now is that Temp is on that team. That's it. Oh yeah. Um, there was a rumor that Clayster was gonna go to that team, and. Um, that they were gonna get Temp and Clay and a couple other people, but Clay has actually like he's not playing this year. Uh, oh, yeah. There was he said, um, this is what he said. Uh, in a tweet uh, a couple weeks ago, he said the grief this last week has made everything 
else seem insignificant and I've neglected to secure employment for next year. Looking like playing is chalked due to offers following through. If anyone has a job opportunity, let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And like he talks about like talking about you know, winning back to back champs and then getting dropped each time, like which is just wild. I cannot believe that happened. And then he talks about that a team basically offered uh Clay a contract and Clay started passing up teams because he thought it was gonna be a done deal and then they just completely like ghosted him. So yeah. I mean he's just Clayster has had the worst luck in the last couple of years and yeah. Um, the rumor actually with the whole Clay situation is that team that like did that to him wasn't even Vegas Legion. The rumor is that it was Boston Breach because they were looking for somebody in place of Methods, but then they brought Methods back. Speaking of like, um, like Clayster and like where he was before like on NYSL, where is um Krim going? Krim, I we have no idea about Krim either. Uh, yeah. Krim has like he's been talking he said that the last time we got anything about Krim was he was seriously contemplating retiring because he's not getting any offers from any teams right now that was a couple Thanks. weeks ago but he said that he has not gotten any offers and that he honestly might end up having to retire so we have two of the greatest Call of Duty players of all time practically being forced into retirement because nobody wants them to play for him. That's just, it's, it boggles my mind. It boggles my mind. That's, that's where we're at now. Like, it's, the thing is, is like, and like I saw Optic, the Optic guys and Methods did a little like round table and they talked about this is like, all these orgs would rather like take a chance on like some amateur that's like just been playing challengers all the time and doesn't really have any actual professional experience and just hope that it works rather than grab a Call of Duty veteran that's been here forever and knows how to you know knows how to build a team knows how to you know play on a team and be really good at the highest level and it's like it's really sad because I mean, there's a lot of people that have gotten shafted because of that, but now, like, some of the greatest Call of Duty players of all time are, is not going to have a spot to play in the league because these all these challengers players are getting spots that haven't really mm -hmm. proven themselves yet. Well, like, the thing is, is, like, you think about it, they they paid a lot of money to get into this league, right? And some of them aren't seeing returns. And... Um, you know, speaking to like last year, NYSL didn't do as good as they were projected to do. So, mm -hmm. um, like, you know, and the in these these challenger players, they're hot, like they're hot, heavy, ready to go. Like they they have got so much passion and energy. They're fresh off of the, you know, they're ready. They want to prove themselves. So that means they're gonna work really, really hard, or they're not, and they're gonna fail. But they're gonna. Most for the most part, they're going to work really, really hard, and they're going to, you know, do everything they can to prove themselves. And I think orgs are looking more at that, and at the fact that like, it's expensive to run a franchise like that, right? And especially with like people with you know resumes like Krim and Playster, you know, they, you got to pay them quite a bit to have them play on your team. You yeah, know I, mean, I mean that's true. These newbies, like these new rookies, like you, you don't have to pay them as much. You know, they don't they don't have they don't have that resume like, you know, the vets do to where like, yeah, I need to pay you a substantial amount of money to play for me. Be like, no, I could I pay you like everybody else because you're not yeah. that good. Or at least you have proven that's, yourself. That's that gonna good. create when they like when they take that, like most of the time they're gonna take that, like especially teams like Paris or Vegas Legion now. Mm -hmm. They're gonna take that and run with it, and it's going to create either a mediocre team or a bad team. Yeah. One of those things. Because it's... it's like, there's always challengers players that are oh, better yeah. than the rest, and they're going to be good. Like, Pred and Sib are two examples. They've grinded challengers, and now they are rightfully in their spot. But, like, there's so many other challengers players, like... Nero and like Capsidal, who have like they've shown that they're pretty good, but then they're not as consistent as they need to be, or like 
they are, are like um somebody like Johnny and those guys that ended up coming over to the Legion uh later in the year who they just they just took an opportunity because they wanted to be in the league and they suffered because now they have the reputation of being on the worst team in the league. Um, and it's like for, I would say for like a veteran, like somebody like clay, I'm sure he would be glad to play on the Legion, even though they're like a meme, because it's like, he already knows that he's good. Like he's not, it's not going to tarnish his reputation that much to play mm -hmm. for a bad team. But these new guys will just do anything to get a CDL spot. And oh, yeah. that's not good. I mean, because there's only so many teams. It's like, you know, my thing personally, I feel like they should add more teams. But we've been talking about this year that they should go from 12 to 16 for forever. I mean, for the, yeah, yeah, literally, literally since, the, since the end of Modern Warfare, they've been talking about expansion and it hasn't happened yet. So. <laughs> and, and expansion would like help with this, though, because then they wouldn't be like, you know, we'd have four more teams in it. They'd have to probably bring down the pricing of entering the franchise because of how expensive it is. It's just, it's not practical. Yeah, because right now it's like, who wants to go enter this league and spend $25 million? Literally, and um, not all the orgs have that kind of money. That's what, like, that's why, like, Halo, Halo did so well, you know? Because you could have an event with, like, two, over, like, 250 teams, and one of them come out on top, you know? And you didn't have to pay millions of dollars to be in the league. And I don't even know how much you had to pay to get into the Overwatch League. Probably, I would say it's probably a similar amount, maybe yeah. a little bit less, because Overwatch wasn't as prominent as COD when it when the Overwatch League started. But I would say that it was it's probably the, a similar amount, which and that's probably why there hasn't been a lot of expansion in the Overwatch League. Is the same reason is like who is going to be willing to spend a whole bunch of money, especially and another thing we have to worry about is the competition because. Most of the best players in the COD League are already on teams, so it's like, I'm sure that other orgs are looking at getting teams, and then they're like, well, who are we going to get? Because all the yeah. best players are already on teams. It's like, it's like, well, <laughs> do gonna, we want to make this gonna, investment? We're going to come into this, and we're going to have to pull up, you know, the best of the best out of challengers. Or, you know, now that, you know, this complication arises, we're like, you know, the big, big names it's it's gonna it's gonna hurt them because they'd have to pay them a lot back to that like pay grade thing, so they wouldn't be able to get you know the the free agents that are out right now that um are you know the best in the best, but because they, they can barely afford to get into the league, let alone pick up the best players. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the minimum salary um for a COD player right now in the league is 50k a year, yeah. and that's definitely not what the best players are being paid. Oh no, that's um, like that's what you get as a challenger play, like coming like out of challenger. Krim said that his salary last year was three hundred eighty k, um, which which is like really good for a CDL player. But like there was rumors. Video games. Yeah. There were rumors that they were trying to get Hydra from New York and they offer him like five hundred k a year. Hydra for that? Yeah. What? No. Yeah, way. there was there was rumors about no that. Way. And and I mean if that's actually true then that's crazy. I mean Yeah. Yeah, it's wild. That New York City money, like, man. It's that New York City money. <laughs> yeah, and then like you got people like Vegas Legion who have like uh, who currently with their roster, this is with their CDL roster and their management combined, they have like four people on that org. Like <laughs> Um so, I mean, it's it's a really weird spot uh, for COD League as far as what are they going to do about expansion? What are they going to do about the teams that are in the league already? Like, I don't know. It's it's wild. Um, and the I mean, I wish they would expand. I wish we would get at least sixteen teams, but. I don't know if that'll happen. Like, it's just too, it's, it, the money. It's the money that's holding people back. Because I know there's people that'd be willing to do, like. There's definitely orgs out there that'd be willing to do it. It's just the money that it takes to get there. It's just so much. 
I mean, the Rise Nation owners are only two people, and they're trying to get a CDL spot. Like, they said that they have the money, and they'd be willing to do it if the CDL would be willing to expand. Yeah. Well, we'll just have to wait and see and hope and pray at this point, you know? How much yeah, else? Yeah, we just, we just have to see what happens. I mean, I, anything can happen, I think, with Modern Warfare 2 at this point. Yeah. Like Speaking of Modern Warfare 2, I think that's a, this is a great way to segue into the next topic after you finish your sentence. Yeah, I mean, literally everything is going down with Modern Warfare 2 tomorrow. Yeah. Like, Call of Duty Next, which was an event that Obviously, we didn't talk about because we didn't have the podcast on for a while. That event is happening tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a huge. It's a so, huge event. It's so supposed we'll be, to be uh, like talking about it next week on the podcast if y'all want to. Supposed to be the biggest Call of Duty event that they've ever had. I mean, there's going to be like they're going to cover Modern Warfare Two uh, and have gameplay of that in multiplayer. They're going to have Warzone 2 coverage, and they're going to be playing that on stream. All the content creators are going to get to play the new iteration of Warzone. Hey. Um, there's Warzone Mobile that's happening, um, which is going to be crazy. It's going to be... It's literally a Warzone mobile game, and it's the, the game is on Verdansk. Like, it's basically Warzone just starting over on mobile. What is it? It's the... Uh... <sighs> I'm trying to wait for like the Eastern Standard Time. It's gonna be what? The uh twelve thirty. Huh? Yeah, twelve thirty tomorrow is when COD next happens. Um and then the beta for Modern Warfare two happens the next day. Um there's a rumor that we're gonna be able to play Warzone two during the beta. I don't know if that's happening yet or not, but that would be wild. Um Bro, I literally have class at twelve thirty. That's the only class. Wait, no I don't. Oh my god, tomorrow's Thursday, I don't have class that day. Dude, you could join in on the event. Bro, I'll be sitting and freaking eating my lunch and watching this in the like in the <laughs> dining hall. <laughs> Go. Oh, I thought yeah, I was gonna be able to watch uh, it. Oh, that was rough. But they've they've done a lot. Like the with since like that event got announced and all that, Infinity Ward's been doing a whole lot with promoting the game and showing off. They've been doing Intel drops. Mm -hmm. Um, they uh, showed off one of the maps. In the yeah, in the first Intel drop, they uh, talked about uh, how like basically how they created maps. And the, before the first uh, the first Intel drop, they showed off Grand Prix, which is which looks really sick. Um, it's actually set at a real life F one track location. It's just obviously all the brandings and stuff are different. Yeah. Um. But that's a map that's going to be in the beta. They also show off a map called Farm 18, which is going to be in the beta. And it's basically like a bigger version of Shoot House. Like, there's a building in the middle that's basically a replica of Shoot House. But there's an outside area that's like another map. Uh -huh. And they're, they're dropping that one. There's a rumor that there's a museum map coming. They showed a mini map off of that a couple of days ago. Um... And they're, I mean, they dropped campaign early access. So anybody who pre-orders Modern Warfare 2 can play the campaign eight days early. Uh, you can play through the whole campaign before the game drops, uh, which is going to be crazy. I'm going to play that for sure. Um, there's a rumor. There's no dates for sure. I'm sure we'll know tomorrow, but... There's no dates for sure on when Warzone 2 is happening, but there's a there was an internal um there was an internal document image that said that Warzone 2 is dropping November 16th. Um which is going to be which is going to be really fun, I think. I think right dropping Warzone 2 too. I think dropping Warzone 2 that soon is good. And the, that's probably when season 1 will start for Modern Warfare 2 probably. Yeah, that makes sense. But they're they're doing that. There's a rumor. Speaking of like the going back to the whole COD League stuff because this ties in with Modern Warfare Two, and everything happening so early. Right now, the rumor is that the first uh, major for Modern Warfare Two uh, is going to be in December. Okay. And so it's sooner than when it's been before. 
It's going to happen. The rumor is that it's a pro am and it's going to happen in December. And actually, and there's been a couple pros who have mentioned this before, which so this is probably true. But there's a rumor that Champs is happening in June next year. Which is going to be very oh. interesting. Because it's like, when does the next season start? Yeah. If it's going to be in June. Like, that's kind of early, right? Maybe, <laughs> maybe they're doing this because, you know, everyone was talking about it last year. How late CDL is starting. So maybe they're, like, you know, giving more off-season time so they can start next, like, even earlier next year. You know? Well, like the, way that starts... it's, the way that it's kind of scaled now with how this whole season has started... We would essentially be starting, at, we would have the same off-season time, maybe a little bit more, but it wouldn't be that crazy. Yeah. Um, because now, instead of Champs in August and the game comes out in October, Champs is going to be in June and they'll probably start the next season maybe October, September of next year or something like that. I don't know. Because, um, like, like, honestly, like, if... Because everyone was asking for an earlier start on the um, CDL League. Yeah. So, I mean, this is an earlier start. Well, yeah, we've start. been wanting an earlier start. I mean, we've been wanting it to start as quickly as possible. Um, and, I mean, we'll see. I, the question, the big question that's looming is what's going to happen with Season 2 of Modern Warfare 2 if that's what's going to happen? That's because true. there's been a lot of rumors about things like this would probably this would greatly help the competitive map pool if this happens yeah. and i hope it happens but there is a leak going around right now that infinity ward plans to drop every map from the old modern warfare 2 all the base maps and there's like 13 or 14 of those there's a rumor that infinity ward is going to drop all of those throughout oh. the span of modern warfare 2 nice so we're going to get all of the old mw2 base maps so I, that's I can't gonna be wait crazy. To the MW2 days, those were. I didn't get to experience them, like, because I stopped playing. I, I started playing after MW, like the first MW2. And yeah. so, like, I didn't the really. First get to, MW2. The first MW2. It's crazy MW2. that we have to say that. I know. Um, so I stopped. <laughs> I started playing after that. So I played it, like, back, like, when there was, like, you know, lots of hackers and stuff like that. Like, when it wasn't, like, in its prime. Yeah. So I'm really excited that they're going to bring some of those older maps back. And um, can I just take a break from this for a second and say Luther's in the chat. Um, Dad's here. Hi, Dad. Let's go. So, um, uh, and if you guys don't know, Luther is one of the co-owners of Denial Gaming, which we are both a part of now. Um, yep. We, uh, now that I'm back, uh, some cool things are going to be happening there. So if you guys um, don't follow the denial gaming uh twitter or anything um go check those peeps out they're really cool really cool cool humans and um yeah the main and only founder true 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 yeah, um, so just you know plug in plug in the official denying official denial g is the official twitch and actually right now i'm gonna i'm gonna put the uh the link to the um twitter and chats real quick yeah put the put the link to the twitters in chat just, you know just a little promotion you know for uh, up um you know true a little promotion for the for the work, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah um so if you guys are watching this at a later date when i finally upload um there you can see it on the screen so if you want to type that in and it'll be descriptions too from now on as well um yeah uh but yeah so the future of cod is gonna be great you know the first beta is this weekend so people are definitely gonna get down and um play a little bit yeah, i'm excited oh yeah excited so there's gonna to be a this. whole b bunch of content for us to consume on monday and tuesday before we give it to you on wednesday next week um and then that that fall that weekend um starting thursday it's open for every other um console Open and playing on, platform um all platforms the next weekend so, so it'd if, be a great time um so there'll be content from us too hopefully i can get some playing in um life's been pretty crazy with this college thing but i had dude i did homework for like five hours the other day i was like oh god so um but i'm settling into it so you know more gaming to be more gaming to come 
Um, so you guys, you know, subscribe to our channels, follow our channels. You gotta channels. play RP. That's what we gotta do. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, bring out great wait, time. Sh- uh, bringing back Granny Tonage. Yeah, Granny Tonage on RP. Oh yeah, that'd be so funny. Uh, good. Um, one of the things that we should talk about before we get to the stuff that has been dropping within the last few hours about Modern Warfare Two, because there's a lot of stuff that's happened, is what Burner said in the chat about the Warzone versus CDL beef. I don't think I even told you about this, but no. the Warzone versus CDL beef was going crazy a couple no. weeks ago. So break it down for me real quick, because I have no idea. So basically, there was a bunch of like, I don't know exactly where it started. I don't know if it started more on the CDL side or the Warzone side. I'm assuming the Warzone players started it, because I don't think the CDL players would have started this argument. But... <laughs> There my apologies Warzone. for that. Hold on. My apologies for that. Rich just crinkled a bag in the mic. Um, wow. But uh, I can't complain too much because they're cleaning right now, so I can't. I can't really say nothing. So, basically, there were some Warzone players talking about how if they made a if they made a team to play against CDL teams, they would be better than the CDL teams. Yeah. And it basically sparked a whole. It sparked a whole debate, and everybody was. All the Warzone players and the CDL players are kind of clashing. Um, there were kind of rumors that they were just doing this to hype up the World Series of Warzone, which that could have been the case, because yeah. it didn't seem like there was a lot of hostility between the two sides. It's just people were kind of bantering about mm-hmm. stuff. But there were actually, within the span of a couple of days, there were a bunch of 1v1s that went down between Warzone and CDL players. Um I know that Methods 1v1 to Biffle. Um, so, so Biffle like, was 1v1 in a bunch of people. He 1v1 Methods. I think he 1v1 a few other pros. Um, there was... I still... I'm going to go back and watch this. Um, I don't actually know the results of this, but apparently they did a... Shotzi participated in a 3v3... Um, hard point game where it was him and two Warzone pl- pros versus another CDL player and two more Warzone pros. Um, the, it was basically just, there was a whole like CDL versus Warzone fest for like a week. It was kind of wild. Oh my god, my mic's been off. Um, there's like two different kinds of game. They're like two different kinds of games, you know. Uh, one's very fast paced. The other one's kind of can be fast paced, but it's more of a medium or long paced game, you know. I mean, yeah, like. So having the pros. I think Warzone is very different than the CDL, but you are playing basically the same game. Yeah, it's the same basis, so. I can get the rivalry going on there, but that's kind of cool though. It gives them a little bit, you know, gives the game a little bit more publicity. Which well, it well here's what I taught. I talked about this uh, a week or so ago, and I really hope that somebody does this. Okay. Okay, I'm listening. So the the rumor right now is that Major One is a pro am. There's going to be see now. There's no rumor about format. There's it's I, we don't know how many teams are going or whatever, but or how you qualify on the amateur side. But here's what I would love to see. Okay. If these if these Warzone pros really want to do this, they should gather what they should gather the best Warzone pros and make one or two teams. And they should grind competitive Modern Warfare 2 and they should play in Challengers Cups and get pro points to qualify for that Challengers tournament and play against the pro teams. Oh, I like that. Gives more gives more um like gives more teams into like top four. That would give us our sixteen teams. Yeah, like I said, there's no rumor. There's no. There's nothing about the format right now. There's no. There's no rumors if it's like oh the twelve CDL teams plus four challengers teams. Like who knows? We could get like a two hundred fifty team tournament. We don't know yet. But if it is like really tight knit, I would love to see a. I would love to see a team of Warzone pros play in challengers for a little bit and get challengers points and at least try to qualify yeah because i think it would be really fun if it was like if you had a team of like freaking 
like Aiden Biffle swag and so, whoever else like playing in a pro am against the CDL teams. Like I think it would be great. Um, but we'll see. So if we want to get down to what's been happening within the last few hours about Modern Warfare 2, there was a lot of stuff that's been coming out. So you were you were able to download if you pre ordered the game on PlayStation or if you have a code um for the beta, you can download the game right now. And um people have been getting into the game. If you actually plug a keyboard into the PS5 and press F3, you can access the settings for Modern Warfare 2. And there is there is an FOV slider for yeah, console on this that. game. But there the good. weird thing is there is also a third person field of view option. What? Yeah, there's a third person field of view option, and it also mentions um, a launcher system slash hub for Call of Duty. I don't know exactly what that is. I don't. I haven't seen anything concrete about it, but that's what Charlie Intel said. There has been a rumor for a while that there's going to be some Call of Duty hub that's kind of like this Netflix, Hulu streaming service type thing where all the games are on this one hub, and you can access them all at the same time. And... Maybe that's about to happen. Maybe we're going to hear about that. Um, there's also um, a walk speed setting in the game. So this setting can be adjusted from 0 to 100. And it's um, it says the value is a fraction of the regular movement speed. Okay, So if it's at 100, you walk at regular movement speed. But you can adjust it like up and down. And apparently... The lower you adjust the walk speed settings, the quieter your footsteps get. And your footsteps are completely silent if the setting is at 25 or lower. Oh. Now, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if that's something that's going to be viable. But that's interesting that that's a setting. Um, that's something we've never seen. Um... It, it has been confirmed via the new Gunsmith Intel drop that they just put out today that while there are nine attachment slots plus the receiver for the Gunsmith, mm -hmm. you can only have five attachments in this game, which is nice. We're yeah. not going to have Vanguard pick ten attachments. Yeah. You can only have five. Okay, so... You gotta the way really it's, pick and choose. The way that this is going to work, and this is a rumor right now, this is not confirmed, but the way that the content creators put it when they watched the Gunsmith stuff back in like June or July whenever they went to Infinity Ward is you can put on the top four attachments, which are you, you apparently have Suppressor, uh, ammo type, optic, and stock. Those are the four, and you are guaranteed those four. But out of the other five slots, you can only pick one. That's a rumor. Now it could just be, oh, you can just pick whatever five attachments you want. But that uh, apparently that's how they were structuring it initially. Um, but here's another thing about that is when it comes to those four guaranteed slots, the suppressors. Uh, or the muzzle is technically what it's called. The muzzle attachment, the ammunition, the optic, and the stock. When you unlock attachments on one gun, one single gun out of however many guns are in this game, when you unlock all of the all of the muzzles, all of the ammo types, all of the optics, and all of the stocks, all of those attachments are available on every gun. You don't have to unlock those attachments ever again. Ooh. But the other five slots are gun specific, so you still have to level up other guns to get the other five attachment slot attachments. But the the attachments for all those four slots are unlocked on every gun once you unlock it for one gun. Oh nice. And the it's way that it's gonna work the way that the whole like receiver system is gonna work is you level up a gun and at one at some point when you level up a gun you get a receiver uh attachment slot. And what it is, is it can change your gun completely into a completely different gun. But all of the attachments that you have gotten that match the receiver that you just unlocked will be available on that new gun. 
So you don't have to just, it's not like, hey, you got to complete a new gun, you have to level it up again. Any attachments that you've gotten on the previous, like, gun that's in the same, like, family as the gun you just unlocked will be available on the new one. Um, so they're basically creating a system where you can, you start with one base gun and you can create multiple completely new guns out of the base gun. Ooh. Like, okay. so, like, I, I'm i not really certain on the exact numbers, but I've heard that there, with this whole, like, receiver system, there could be over 100 guns in this game. That's a lot of guns. <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean, goodness. like, and it's, and it's not like Modern Warfare, like, because in, remember in Modern Warfare 2019 how it was like, Oh, if you put this different mag on the AK-47, it get, it turns it into the 74U. It's not like that. It's you literally unlock a completely new gun, and it works way differently than just let's throw an attachment on and it slightly changes the first gun. It's gonna be it's kind of complex, but I'm sure they'll like break it down more tomorrow. Oh, yeah. But there's been a lot of stuff about that. Um, there's there's rumors right now with Warzone 2 that I'm sure they'll be confirmed tomorrow if we're seeing gameplay, but there's rumors that it's going to be a lot more like Blackout than Warzone. Um, oh, yeah. There's a backpack system where you basically have kind of like limited inventory depending on what kind of backpack you find. Um, there's a rumor that you don't start with armor in this game. You have to actually pick up an armor vest and then you can apply armor plates. Um... There's there's a lot of stuff. I mean, oh, right. a lot of stuff about this game that has been unconfirmed. Like oh, movement I wise, to, I can't wait to talk all about it after, especially after like it first drops. Oh, it's gonna be such a good, such good play. The crazy Brand thing new. is like that that now instead of you know in past years like we have you know we would have a huge multiplayer event. And it's like hey, you gotta play the beta, but it's on like two weeks. Yeah. Like, now it's like, hey, the beta's tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Events today, beta's tomorrow. Let's go. You know? Yeah, so... um, One of the biggest things, I think, for the whole game in general, but especially the competitive side, is... It's going to be confirmed, obviously, tomorrow, but the pros have basically said that slide canceling is dead. You can't do it anymore. Oh. They they said that when you slide, it's like the ghost slide where like you have to you don't have your gun up like you you can't slide and be like shooting people and all that. So now when you're in a slide, it's probably going to be disadvantageous for you to just slide into a gunfight. Yeah. You're probably going to die. Um. And now like there's there's a slide and a dolphin dive in this game apparently. So that's going to be interesting. Dolphin dive. Um. Yeah, apparently, like, now, if you tap, uh, if you tap the button, it's a slide, and if you hold it, it's a dolphin dive. But, I mean, like I said, everything will be confirmed tomorrow. There's just a whole lot of, like, rumors swirling around about this game. Some stuff has been confirmed, some stuff hasn't been confirmed. Um, we do know that there is going to be a, di there's going to be a distinction between the maps. Um, there are, uh... There are core maps, which are 6v6, and they're specifically designed for 6v6 and nothing else. Um, it's not going to be like Vanguard, where like some of the maps are bigger, so they support bigger player sizes and all that. It's They are 6v6 maps, and that's it. Oh my. Um, but then there are battle maps, which are actually different POIs in the Warzone map. That are like ground war for modern warfare where they support massive player counts there's vehicles and swimming mechanics and all that in those maps and i assume i mean i assume we're going to get to play all that stuff and i mean if they're allowing the content creators to play warzone 2 tomorrow i'm gonna assume that at some point, whether it's a separate beta or whether we play it in this beta, I'm assuming we're going to get to play Warzone 2 before the game comes out. Oh, yeah. Because we have never had, since Blackout, we have never had, like, Warzone gameplay before the actual parts of the Warzone release. It's going to be, I'm, I'm excited. It's going to be, uh, oh, I'm, I'm really excited. 
I'm gonna have to like like crack down and like figure out my studying mechanisms so I can like get my homework done in a short amount of hours so I can play more. Oh, because I'm not you know the I'm saying. you know you know I'm not the just oh I just have to go to work for six hours. It's like oh I gotta go to school for five hours and then come back and do four hours of homework, five hours of homework. So I'm gonna you know really get into it. We can, yeah, uh, you <laughs> so I can play again. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna start playing some Vanguard here. So like when I go into MW I'm, I'm MW2, I'm not absolute trash. But Should probably go back and play MW. Ah, uh, yeah, probably. I would probably. That's help what I'm stuff. gonna do. Probably yeah? if I if I play any COD outside of maybe like Cold War, I'm probably just gonna play MW. Ooh, maybe we can play together. Yeah, I'd be down. I mean, I'm probably gonna play Warzone still. So. Yeah. All right, man. I'm gonna have to call it here though. I gotta go finish. I definitely have to go do my homework and do some cleaning and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. So, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast, the comeback episode of the podcast. Uh, Deception, you have anything else you want to say before we uh, conclude this up a little bit? I am super glad that we're back and uh, better than ever. I mean, <laughs> hopefully we're back for good for sure. <laughs> yeah, man. My bad on that one. <laughs> uh yeah but thank you guys so much for tuning in make sure to like the podcast you know comment if you have any co if you have any questions you want us to answer in any following podcast please comment them you know add us on twitter or dm us on twitter or come into the live stream a new time it's not at noon anymore it's at like four ish uh which is more you know ab available for a lot of people too which might help yeah we'll so, probably be doing it at like four from now on or maybe maybe four thirty. I, I like four so far but we'll have to we'll have to see how it goes um yeah so this is new time hopefully a little bit better for for all y'all to be able to come in um listen and watch uh but yeah so thank you guys so much for tuning in do all the fancy things um see you guys next time say peace wow you make me say that's crazy yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Say it. Peace.